Hey YouTube, this is Evan Magician 34 coming to you with this week's edition of The Edge. Uh, following in line with last week, I'm taking a break from doing exclusive single cards, and instead we're going to talk about basic game strategy, because one thing that will definitely give you the edge in combat is knowing how your opponent's going to play, and basically knowing how your own deck should operate. Uh, we're going to talk about the three major deck types today. Now we're talking about types, not archetypes, and those things are different. For example, Black Wings and Light Swarns and Jurax are all different archetypes, but they're all the same basic type of deck. All of these decks are aggro decks, and aggro decks are the first of the three. And what defines an aggro deck is basically that it's, uh, it's as General Patton once said, it's strike hard, strike fast, strike often. Uh, the theory of the deck isn't overly complicated. It's attack your opponent, hit them with big things, hit them a lot. If your opponent puts things in the way, destroy them and then keep hitting them. Uh, it's not overly complicated. It's not a, a thinker's deck necessarily. Uh, but the common objective is, of aggro is to aggress, to be aggressive. That's what aggro is short for, aggressive. The second archetype, or sorry, the second type actually, is control. And I think counter fairies are an excellent example of control. Uh, the whole premise of a control deck is just to control the game. Um, a friend of mine long ago who uh, taught me how to play competitively, uh, well, one of the people who taught me to play competitively, uh, once said something when I was playing aggressively and he was playing a control deck, he said, when I talked about how many life points I was taking, he said, the only life point that matters is your last one. And that's kind of like a mantra for control decks. Uh, the idea is not about life points, it's not about how quickly you win, it's about how certain your win is about controlling the field. Basically, instead of focusing on hitting the opponent, they're focusing on the hand, the field, controlling possibilities, remaining in control of the situation and what's going on in the duel. Um, and that's how they win. Basically, is they dictate what your opponent's going to be able to, what their opponent's going to be able to do, and they leave themselves with a lot of options. And they uh, they focus especially on card advantage usually. Um, so that's uh, the premise behind control. And the final deck type is combo. And Exodia is uh, an excellent example of a combo deck. Uh, combo decks are often uh, true combo decks in the truest sense of the term. Are basically decks that can be described as playing by yourself for five or ten minutes. Uh, having one turn and then trying to win. Which is kind of a dramatization because some combo decks are considerably slower. But the idea of a combo deck is fairly similar to that in that you ignore your opponent. Combo decks are basically designed to accomplish a certain situation. They put certain cards on the field simultaneously, get a certain pattern of effects looping, uh, to get certain cards in your hand, something like that. They're trying to achieve a specific goal, a certain situation that basically gives them the game, a, a winning situation. And for the most part, they ignore the opponent altogether. They have cards designed to control the opponent and stop them, big stops like Gravity Bind, Level Limit, Threatening Roar, but more or less they just ignore the opponent. They don't worry about building up big monsters. They don't worry about long-term defenses necessarily. They're mainly just concerned with getting to their ideal situation, and that's all they care about. And most decks fall into one of these three categories. Now, some decks do, of course, tread the line between one or the other of these things, and sometimes you can kind of be partially one and partially the other. But these are the basic uh, types of decks. And virtually every opponent is going to have goals that, that run in line with one of these deck types. Recognizing what your opponent's goals are, therefore, helps you predict how they're going to act, what they'll play, what they're trying to do, how they're thinking, and ways you can play around their thought patterns. Uh, psychology is one third of the game, and so understanding this kind of stuff helps you get control of that third. <clears throat> of course, these are only deck types. But you have to remember that even though these are how your opponent's deck are supposed to function, some players will interpret that differently because players themselves fall into these kinds of categories and they play the way they think. So you have to not only recognize how your opponent's deck is supposed to run, but what spin on your opponent's deck your opponent might be playing because you might be playing, say, a control deck, but an aggressive player may be playing the deck. And I'm going to give you some examples here. This mat is a good example of the mentality of the aggressive player. They want to beat you down. They're angry. They want to destroy things. And that's how they operate. Obviously, these kind of players usually play aggressive decks. 
but they sometimes play combo decks. But they'll play combo decks that are designed to achieve big beatdown turns. Um, for example, an agent deck is typically designed to just sort of slowly grind, but sometimes aggressive players will play out and try to accrue cards in their hand and suddenly explode and overcommit to their field with, say, double Hyperions and then a Christia, leave it all out and not even kill you just because they want to aggress you and deal the damage. Recognizing how your opponent will interpret that same stack of cards differently from how someone else might play that same stack of cards is important in predicting what they'll play, how they'll play, will they have any extra cards left, will they try to bluff you, things like that. And combo players similarly may hold back a lot more trying to achieve a very specific situation even though it's the same deck. So the important thing to remember is for the archetype of the aggressive player is they just want to hit you, they want to beat you down, and even though they're playing a control deck, you may realize that they may drop their answers very quickly and try to get into a certain situation much faster. Basically the situation where they're going to damage you and beat you quickly. Aggro players want to be quick. That's, that's their mantra. They're fast. Now on the other hand, the controlling player is going to take their time. Even with an aggressive deck, they're going to try to set up ideal situations, hide behind good monsters. So let's say the control player is playing an aggro deck. They'll probably be the one to hold a lot more cards back in their hand. They'll play conservatively with their back rows. They're going to be trying to feel you out, because that's how a control player thinks. And so even if their deck is, say, a combo deck or an aggro deck instead of a control deck, that's how they're going to spin that deck. Learn to recognize these signs. Game 1 will often tell you how your opponent thinks. Apply that also to how they're going to side deck. Now, the combo player, on the other hand, is kind of clueless about you. They're not focusing on you. They're not thinking about you. They're not even considering your back rows most of the time. All they're considering is their own situation. They're not really thinking about what surprises you might have in store. You can also probably catch them with easy traps out of your side deck because they're too busy worrying about what they're doing. They're trying to achieve, okay, I need this card, I need that card. They're basically all in their own head. And that's how combo players tend to think. So that's something you can take advantage of. But once again, ultimately what it comes down to is studying your specific opponent. Most people are kind of a, a mix, just like most decks usually kind of blur a line a little bit. They're more aggro than control, or they're more combo than aggro, or something like that. So it's important to recognize which of these archetypes your opponent falls into the most. Figure out how they play, study. Do they overcommit to their field? Do they tend to hold a lot back? Do they try to play king of the hill with one monster? Think about these things. If you can get inside your opponent's head, then you can have the edge. And until next time, rate, comment, subscribe, and check out my channel for more cool videos.